We will not live in the same house, and I will never sleep over at your house. Well, I can't leave it that way, but I assure you, whatever it is, you can tell me, and we'll solve it together. Once upon a time, in a small village in Africa named Yumu, there lived a young orphan named Nia. She had been alone since her parents passed away, living quietly and without bothering anyone. As Nia grew into a young woman, her uncles, who had shown no care for her after her parents' death, decided it was time for her to get married. They were eager to receive the bride price from a potential suitor. Without informing Nia, they began searching for a husband for her. Finding a suitor was not difficult, as Nia was known throughout the village for her exceptional beauty. However, Nia was unaware of all these plans. Whenever men tried to approach her, she would ignore them. If they persisted, she would embarrass them. Are you waiting for a king to marry you? Some men would tease, but Nia never cared about their comments. She had very few friends and never let anyone into her heart. The village ladies considered her proud, attributing it to her beauty getting to her head. The only person Nia allowed into her life was Oki, her neighbor at the market where she sold food. Despite their friendly interactions, their conversations never went beyond market talk. Weeks passed, and Nia's uncles called her for a meeting. They wanted to discuss their chosen husband for her. We have waited patiently for you to find a husband, but since you haven't, we've chosen one for you," one of her uncles declared. They informed her that the suitor they chose would visit her the next day. So, the next day, Nia sat in front of her house, waiting patiently for her suitor. Beside her was a pot of water, which she planned to pour on the man as soon as she saw him. When the man approached, Nia grabbed the pot, ran towards him, and splashed the water on his body. She then picked up a big stick and chased him away. When the news reached her uncles, they summoned her. Naya faked remorse, knelt, and begged them, promising she wouldn't do it again. It's okay, my daughter, one of her uncles said. Although you scared off the first man, we have another one for you. The following week, Nia waited for her second suitor. This time, she had a gun beside her, which had belonged to her late father, a hunter. When the man approached, Nia pretended to hug him, but instead bit his shoulder. The man, in pain, ran away. News of Nia's actions spread throughout the village, and she was pleased. Everyone would now understand that she wasn't interested in a suitor, for reasons she didn't care to share. However, there was a man named Chike who was determined to marry Nia despite the village stories. He believed she was his choice, as every time he saw Nia, she was calm and never displayed aggressive behavior. Chike decided to become her friend before seeking her hand in marriage. One day, he went to Nia's shop to buy some goods. He noticed she was struggling with calculations due to a large shipment of goods. Chaik helped her with instant answers, impressing Nea. She looked at him in doubt but eventually arrived at the same answers. Wow, Nia said with a smile, impressed by Chaik's smartness. Chaik was excited. It was their first interaction beyond business. He helped her with the remaining calculations, and Nia offered him a drink, which he declined. Weeks passed, and Chaik kept coming to the shop. Their conversations became more than just business, and sometimes he even helped her with calculations. One evening, Nea was about to close her shop when she arrived. She was already packed to go home, but when she realized her wheelbarrow had a flat tire, she exclaimed, What will I do now? Chike asked if he could help her carry some items to her house, to which Nea angrily responded, Of course not. I'll tell you where to stop. Despite her protests, Chike started walking towards her house with the items. Nia, realizing what he was doing, ran after him, threatening to shoot if he came closer. Chike, however, only intended to drop the items close to her house, which he did. As he walked away, Nia smiled shyly. 
feeling something for him, but quickly dismissing it. Of course I can't marry him, she said to herself. The next day, Jake came to see Nia at her shop, but she refused to attend to him, asking him to leave. Chike then went to Ibel's shop nearby, saying he wanted to buy something from her. Nia was confused. What could you possibly want to buy from Ibel? She asked. Ibel sells women's beads. Ibel, who had observed Chike's interest in Nia, quickly came to his rescue. Don't chase away my customer. Let him be. So every day, Chike would buy beads from Ibel, and Nia eagerly awaited his visits. If he was late, she would be visibly upset. It became evident to everyone, including Ibel, that Nia liked Chaik. Two months later, Ibel informed Nia that a suitor had come to marry her, and she would be leaving the village soon. Nia was happy for her friend, but also saddened because she knew she would be left alone. She realized she might remain alone for the rest of her life and decided on a plan. The next day, she went to find Shaik. Shaik, she said, if you still want to marry me, I'm ready to accept your proposal. Shaik smiled and nodded in approval. Nia, thank you for accepting my proposal, he said, handing her all the beads he had been buying. Nia blushed at his gesture, but their conversation wasn't over. She laid out her conditions. We will not live in the same house, and I will never sleep over at your house, Naya stated firmly. Chaik was puzzled by these conditions, but agreed to fulfill his obligations as her husband. Nia trembled as she spoke, fearing she might lose him. Chaik pressed to find out why she had such strict conditions, but she refused to answer. Well, I can't leave it that way, he said. But I assure you, Whatever it is, you can tell me, and we'll solve it together. Nia burst into tears, realizing she might be alone forever. Chaik tried to console her, but she was inconsolable. Eventually, she left him and returned home. Two days passed, and Chaik kept coming to the market to check on Nia, but she was nowhere to be found. Worried, he decided to go close to her house and call her name. Nia! he shouted, but there was no response. He noticed a strong stench as he moved closer to her house, and upon pushing the door open, he found Nea lying sick in bed. Please leave my house, Nea said faintly through tears. Chaik quickly ran and called the herbalist to attend to her. The herbalist couldn't stay long due to the smell, but Chaik wasn't deterred. He fed Nea the medicine and stayed with her, taking care of her needs. He cleaned her house, noticing a patch of water where Nia lay. Upon closer inspection, he realized Nia had been bedwetting. Nia was ashamed her secret had been discovered. Chaik comforted her, explaining that it was a condition she had to live with. She feared no man would accept her, but Chaik insisted on marrying her despite her bedwetting. This happens to me every night, Nia told him. Chaik responded, and we will deal with it together every day. The next morning, Chaik did not show up as promised. Nea panicked, thinking he had abandoned her. She walked into the village, noticing a group of girls looking at her strangely. Thinking Chaik had spread her secret, she angrily shouted, So what? It's not my fault I wet the bed. To her surprise, Chaik was walking towards her house at that moment. He had decided to meet with builders to construct a new house with proper ventilation for them to live as a couple. Realizing she had misunderstood, Nia ran back home, and Chike followed. The villagers will all know now, Nia cried, but Chike reassured her, saying they would deal with it together. Feeling foolish for not believing him, Nia blamed herself. They got married and lived happily, working together to improve their home. Despite what the villagers said, they were the happiest couple in the village. Nia even made more friends who loved her despite her condition. Their story was a testament to true friendship, the kind everyone should hope for in life. They showed that in tough times, having solid friendships can make all the difference. 
In conclusion, their story exemplified the love and loyalty we should strive for in our relationships, mirroring the perfect love of God. More interesting stories are on the way, so make sure to subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. I would love to hear your thoughts in comments below. Thank you for watching.